Glory to your holy name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to your holy name. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we're so grateful and thankful for all your blessings. We thank you for the privilege that we have to come together in the name of Jesus, together around that name that's above every name, the name of our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you again tonight for your precious, holy, written word. Thank you for the privilege that we have to feed upon your word. Thank you again this night for the Holy Spirit, whom thou hast sent to indwell us, to be our teacher, to be our guide. We trust him tonight to live big in us, to think through our minds, speak through our lips, unveil the word of God unto our spirits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we pray for all of us that we'd not just be hearers of the word only, but we'll be doers thereof, acting upon the word of God, putting it into practice. For it's then that we become recipients of all that you provided and all that you promised. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. Amen. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You may be seated. I want you to say it out loud. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. And, his and His mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's something else that we need. We better not forget. Amen. <laughs> say it again. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. And His mercy endureth forever. How long? Forever. 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 Aren't you glad? The Lord is good. Praise God. Amen. I remember a number of years ago, in fact, I left my last church I pastored in 1949, 1949 through 1962. And over into 63, I was strictly in the churches with what we call revival meetings. Pastors would say to me, you make it too easy for people to be saved. I said, no, I didn't do it. God did. He put it on a gift basis. You make it too easy, they'd say, for people to get healed. I said, no, I didn't do that. God did. He put it on a gift basis. You make it too, I'm talking about pastors now. You make it too easy for people to get the Holy Ghost. I said, no, I didn't make it easy. God did. He put it on a gift. All those are gifts. All you got to do is just receive gifts. Praise God. Brother Oral Roberts uh, popularized a statement in those days saying, God is a good God. And I had pastor after pastor to tell me, I wish he wouldn't say that. And I said, why? Isn't he a good God? Is he a good God or is he a bad God? What kind of God is he? Well, yeah, yeah, he's good, all right. But said, that makes people think it's so easy. I said, thank God it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, say it again. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever. forever. Say it again. The Lord is good. And his mercy forever. Say it again. The Lord is good. And his mercy One more time. Well, if the Lord is good, then God is a good God. Not a bad God, a good God. Hallelujah. I rejoice in it. Praise God. You have your Bibles tonight? Open them to the 118th Psalm. Psalm 118. We're going to begin to read with the 19th verse and read down through the 24th verse. Psalm 118, beginning to read with the 19th verse. Thank God for the word. Hallelujah. 19th verse of the 118th Psalm. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them, and I will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter, I will praise thee. For thou hast heard me, and art become my salvation. 
The stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we sing the chorus sometimes, you know. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and be glad in it. And I think a lot of times people think about, you know, the, the, what day of the week it is. You know, Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or Saturday or Sunday. And that's not what he's talking about at all. Amen. He's not talking about some weekday or some particular day in that sense. This is the day which the Lord has made. Now notice, the stone which the builders refuse has become the headstone of the corner. That's talking about Jesus. We'll look at Scripture further along that line. No, the word day in the Bible is used very often not to talk about Monday or Tuesday or some day of the week, but a specific time or specific period. Now, again, we use it the same way. We talk about things that happened in Grandma's day. Amen. We talk about things, you know, some of we that's 39 and older. <laughs> we talk about yesterday. We're talking about things that happened yesterday. Sometimes some of we folks that are a little bit older talk about the, the day of the Great Depression. Amen. And it's hard for some of you young folks today to understand that. And I tell some illustrations sometimes, and sometimes some of the young folk can't believe it. Because, see, they didn't come up in that day. And they don't understand a lot of things. Amen. But I'll tell you the truth about it. As a, as a, a, a little boy, I, I've worked, you know, in a neighbor's yard and, and weeded all the flowers and mowed the yard, did all of it for 10 cents, one dime. Glad to get it. I, I first started preaching out in the country. I'm a great faith person, you know. I'm going to live by faith. We never did receive an offering in our church. Never took up an offering for the pastor. I'm just going to believe God, you know. We... Uh, you know, we had a guest speaker. Of course, you're obligated. We'd, we'd, we didn't even have an offering plate. We'd borrow some man's hat and pass it for the special speaker, but never received an offer. Well, one time, I remember, I needed $3.30. Don't sound big now, but you see, $3.30 is over a half a week's pay because a dollar a day. I mean, I've worked a many a day. For a dollar, I don't mean eight hours. I mean from sun up to sundown for one dollar. Glad to get it. And there were hundreds, I don't mean a dozens, hundreds of men standing around on the streets that would have been glad to have to find a job. Amen. I mean a dollar a day. A dollar a day. Amen. Amen. But you know, the, I, I pastored that church, started it. Another fellow helped me. We started it. I pastored that church nearly three years, and, and only one time in three years did I ever receive an offering. I, I, I was desperate. I needed three dollars. Don't sound big like I said, but you understand, at a dollar a day, that's over three days. That's over half a week's pay. And I got to have this money on Monday. Well, I just prayed about it, but right in the middle of a song, Little red-headed woman, Sister Mary Hall, played the piano. And she stopped. She didn't wait till she got to the end of the verse. She stopped right in the middle of a verse, a song. She's playing the piano. Just stopped. And jumped up off of the piano bench and said, Bless God, I'm going to take up Brother Hagin an offering if it hair lips the devil. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. Said the Lord told me he needs three dollars and something. Well, I did. You said, "Oh yeah, I got it." But then I left that church, and I got a whipping. You know, the Lord doesn't always settle up every Saturday night. Amen. He doesn't always settle up every first of the month. He doesn't always settle up the first of every year. But sooner or day, sooner or later, payday's coming. 
And sometimes, you know, uh, when payday comes, it isn't a blessing. The Lord began to deal with me. And I mean, he got rough with me. He said, I want you to go back to that church, and I want you to ask them to forgive you. You claim to be a great faith person. You're just going to believe God, let God meet the need. But said, you robbed the people. You robbed the people. You didn't teach them about giving. You didn't teach them tithes and offerings. And you robbed them. See, they can't be blessed. Amen. See, they can't be blessed unless they do what the Bible said to them. And you didn't teach them. Well, I said, Lord, I, 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 you know, there, there's a pastor followed me there, and he's there. See, this is a couple of years after I'd left. And, and uh, I, I can't, he might think I'm wanting to come back and take the church over. Now, he's got the same Holy Ghost I do. You talk to him. Sure enough, he began to talk to him, and he wrote me a letter. These were depression days. We didn't have telephones. I mean, they were a luxury. Very few people had a telephone. I didn't have one. He didn't have one. And so he wrote me a letter and said, Brother Hagin, I don't understand it. But he said, it seems like the Lord is talking to me about you coming back and holding a revival or preaching for us or something. If you feel like it's God, well, just contact me. So I wrote him back. I didn't tell him, oh, yeah, God's been talking to me for weeks about that. He's given me, well, I just said, okay, you feel like that, I'll, I'll come. And so we went the first, very first service on a Sunday night. We started out the meeting. I got up, bless God, and apologized. I'd ask the Lord to forgive me. He forgave me. Now, I had to ask. He told me, you asked the people to forgive you. And I asked them to forgive me. And then I spent a whole sermon teaching or preaching on tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Well, thank God for the Word and thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Now, it, 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 you know, uh, I've had people, because like I said, from we, were, we left our last church in 1949, church where we pastored. And for those years, we were in churches holding meetings for 13 years and a little better. And uh, I'm just there as a guest speaker. I didn't take up any offerings. They'd receive an offering from me because I am the guest speaker, of course, and so on and so forth. And then... The Lord said to me, 1963, to go a little different route and to put on your own meeting. Even if you go to a church, he said, don't just go hold them revival. You go put on your own meeting. Take up your own offerings. And uh, I've had folks tell me, said, well, you're doing it wrong. You ought to do it this way. And I was in churches that, they didn't receive offerings. They, they had a little bucket or something back at the door if anybody wanted to put anything in. Maybe that's what God said to them. But I remember when Jesus said to me in 1950 when he appeared to me in that first vision and laid the finger of his right hand in the palm of each one of my hands and said, I've anointed thee, call thee and anointed thee and give me a special anointing to minister to the sick. He said, at the end of that vision, which was about an hour and a half long, Jesus finished his conversation with me and said, Be faithful, fulfill your ministry, for the time is short. What well, somebody said, that's 48 years ago. Yeah, but the Bible said with the Lord, a thousand years is a thousand years, as one day, and one day is a thousand years. So 48 years, you know, just about like that, short. You have to look at things from his perspective. And so he said, uh, and, and turned and walked away, just like, you know, holding a conversation with some man. He walked three or four steps and turned around and came back and said to me, there are two things to be careful about. Number one, he said, be sure that you always give all praise and all glory for everything that happens unto me, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, and to my name. Take no glory. Uh, that's the reason I don't like people to introduce me. Ken did that the other night, and once in a while they'll slip up on me. Sometimes people say, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because 
I'm just a servant of the Lord, praise God, doing the best I can to please Him. Amen? Amen. Nothing big, nothing great about me, but there is something big and something great about God. Hallelujah. And about Jesus. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Be sure, be careful, he said. Be sure you give all praise and honor and glory unto, unto me and my name. And then he said, number two, be careful about money. Be careful about money. Many, he said, on whom I have called and placed my spirit, called unto such a ministry and placed my spirit and anointed them, have become money conscious and have lost the anointing. He said, people will give money. I mean, many times people with children that have the polio, and thank God we've seen some of them healed, and, and incurable, they, they, they'd give any amount of money for their healing. But you make no charge for your ministry. Only receive offerings like you have been doing, like you have been doing. And so I've just followed the pattern all the years like I have been doing. Amen. I, I, I had a man one time. And, and this is just one isolated incident, but it happens. You know, I mean, he took a water bill that big out of his pocket. He wanted me to pay, pray for his child. I said, put the money back in your pocket. Now, I'll pray for your child free of charge. You can't pay for God's blessing. And if you're going to give me that money, then I can't pray for the child. Take, make no charge. I, I, I never so, told the church i got to have so much money or I require anything. Because he said, make no charge for your ministry. Well, thank God for the Word, and thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I want to reiterate because God wants me to. You see, uh, I pastored there about three years, approximately, not quite, three years. And then two years afterwards, five years, God began to deal with me. I had to straighten that up. Uh, you know, when I say he gave me a whipping, I mean talking to me. You know, words sometimes hurt worse than lashes do. Amen, working you over. And so, you, mean, you need not think sometimes that you got by with certain things. Amen. And you may have to go back and straighten up some things just like I did and in other areas as far as that's concerned. But if you have to, bless God, just be, just be a man about it and do it. And if you're going to go on with God, and walk in fellowship with him, amen, you're going to have to. Now, you know, actually, I pastored nearly 12 years, and uh, not, not the same church. In Pentecostal circles, they'd change churches about every year. Well, I thought I did a good job, I'll be honest with you. Man, I left, you know, I thought I've done a jam-up job, pastor. And about a couple of years later, just like this case, you know, you know, you grew up a little bit. How many of you folks ever grown any? <laughs> you grew a little bit, and you found out that you did a lousy job. And I got so embarrassed, I, I, I was even been too embarrassed to go back and visit the church that I pastor. No, thank God, let's just do the best we can. Trust the Lord, he'll see us through. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. Let's look at her text. We won't charge you anything for that. Sometimes little side journeys helps as much as anything. Amen. The stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. We'll rejoice in it. See, he's talking about the day when, when the stone, which the builders refused, is become the head stone of the corner. Hallelujah. The stone which the builders refused is become the head stone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous. It's marvelous. This is the day. Hallelujah. The Lord is made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Now, come over to the New Testament. Notice in... Uh, there are several instances, for instance, that say about the same thing, the four, three of the four Gospels. You know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew, the 21st chapter and the 42nd verse. Luke, the 20th chapter and the 17th verse. And Mark, the 12th chapter and the 10th verse. Now, all of them 
say about the same thing. Don't use the same words necessarily, but it's the same thing. Now notice, Jesus saith unto them, did you never read in the Scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. Now, you see it says here in, in the Psalms, in King James Version, they refused. Well, if they refused, they rejected, didn't they? Amen. The same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing and is marvelous in our eyes. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, you could look up those three references, and you'll find all of them say about the same thing. Now then, coming over to the Acts of the Apostles, the fourth chapter, uh, notice the 11th verse. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Now notice the next verse, the 12th verse. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Hallelujah. So he's talking about the day of salvation, isn't he? Now notice Ephesians, the second chapter in the 20th verse. Paul writing to the church at Ephesus, talking about the church says, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Now notice, Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner stone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now turn on over a little further in your Bibles to 1 Peter and notice something that he said. In the second chapter of 1 Peter, we're going to read the fourth, fifth, and sixth verses. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, Hallelujah, and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also, hallelujah, it is committed in the, in the Scriptures, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. And he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. I just read all of those scriptures to you to see that he's talking about, praise God, not some day of the week, but a day. Hallelujah. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Amen. And this day is a day of salvation. We read that verse there in Acts 4.11. Amen. About this is the stone which was set at naught. You'll notice you have three different expressions. It says he was refused. It says he was rejected. It says he was set at naught. Well, that's just another way of saying the same thing. Amen. Of you builders. But he is become the head of the corner. And there is salvation, no salvation in any other name. None other than his. Praise God. So then, this is the day of salvation. Glory to God. We will rejoice and be glad. Be glad. Now, you just wonder about some people whether they're saved or not. They always look so sad. Amen? But this is the day, glory to God, the day of salvation. Amen. Amen. Paul said, writing to the Romans, you remember in Romans, the first chapter, the sixth verse, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first also, the Gentile or the Greek. Praise God. Now, in this word salvation, you'll notice in the Schofield Bible, Mr. Schofield brings out in the footnote, that the Greek and Hebrew words for salvation imply, he says, the ideas of deliverance, safety, preservation, healing, and soundness. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
So it's a day of salvation. That word salvation is an all-inclusive word. Praise God. Thank God it is a day of deliverance. It is a day of deliverance. It is a day of safety. It is a day of preservation. Hallelujah. I'll tell you, you look at some Christians. I've gone to churches, particularly in years gone by. I've gone to churches, and by looking at the congregation, they all look so sad. They all look like, you know, that they had, uh, you know, if they had any friends, they'd lost all of them. You, you, you'd think by looking at them that they were pickled, put up in vinegar. But the Bible never said a word about the saints being pickled. The Bible said that they're preserved. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And in this word salvation also, as Mr. Schofield even admitted, he, amen, healing's in it. Glory to God. Amen. It's a day of deliverance. It's a day of safety. It's a day of preservation. It's a day of healing. It's a day of soundness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen? This word salvation, as Mr. Schofield points out, is the great inclusive word of the gospel. Gathered into it all. Hallelujah. All that it implies, all that's ours. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. So this is a day, day of salvation, day of healing. This is the day. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. You know, actually, because of a low degree of faith, because the folks have not been adequately taught, well, we have to have healing services and pray for the sick and minister healing. But if folks really knew the truth, they don't need to have anybody to pray for them. Amen. If they would know the truth and act upon the truth, praise God, because this is the day of healing. Well, if it's the day of healing, then you don't have to question, is it God's will? Is it God's plan? Because this is the day. This is the day. Now, it's the simplest thing in the world, if you, you know what I mean, to get people healed. It's an easiest thing in the world if you can just get them to listen to you. The Bible said concerning Jesus in the Gospels more than once, talks about the multitudes that came to hear him. It says they came to hear and to be healed. Now, see, a lot of people come to be healed, but they don't come to hear. But hearing and healing go together. Amen? Praise God. Now, for instance, I was preaching a meeting right here in Oklahoma in 1950. Well, the Lord had just appeared to me a few days before in that vision in Rockwall, Texas. And I had always ministered to the sick. Even as a Baptist, I got people healed. And a Baptist boy preacher, praise God, I got people healed by laying on their hands and knowing with all and so on and, and teaching them to believe. But then you can minister with anointing, but yet people still have to believe. Amen? And so uh, I was ministering with the anointing but you know, you preach for an hour and give an altar call, and then minister to the sick on a one-to-one -one basis, and uh, you get tired. And when you get tired, it's difficult to yield to the Holy Ghost. In fact, a lot of times the anointing will just lift from you. In other words, it's like a, it's like a bird sitting on your shoulders, just fly away. And, and so I went so far, and then the anointing lifted. See, because the Lord said you have an anointing to do something doesn't mean that the anointing's in manifestation all the time. Now, preachers, pastors, preachers, teachers get anointed to preach and teach, but the anointing's not in manifestation all the time, for if it was, you'd be preaching 24 hours a day. Amen. But you see, you prepare yourself and believe God, and the anointing comes. And when it lifts, you ought to shut up, but most of us don't. <laughs> Might as well say amen, so anyway... Amen. 
But I'm ministering to the sick, you see. I'm taking them one by one. Now, in smaller meetings, you can do that. You'll get a bigger percentage of them healed if you'll do it. Yes, yes. Amen. But in big meetings like this, you, you, you know, because we're just going to be here one week, you couldn't do that. See, I'd hold meetings sometime. In fact, I got to the place I wouldn't accept a meeting less than three weeks. And I'd hold meetings three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I think one, nine weeks. Well, you got plenty of time. I remember one fellow came that was deaf. Now, it took me 45 minutes just with that one man, but I got both ears open. Ten years later, I saw him, he's still healed. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Glory to God. Now, I'll let you in on a secret. With a small church, you could do it. With a big church, you couldn't. Uh, but uh, you, you've heard me say, and sometimes we need to qualify the statement because people can misjudge it and put their own interpretation on it. You've heard me say that in 12 years of pastoral work, my wife and I never did bury one church member. Now, I never thought of that. But in one of our seminars, my wife asked her, said, Honey, while you were teaching this morning, it just dawned on me. In 12 years, we never did bury one church member. Well, I went back and looked over my records. And in 12 years' time, I had only either preached or assisted in seven funerals. That's all. And they were either somebody that's kin to somebody that's in my church or there's somebody that used to be a member of that church years before moved away before I ever came. And uh, they passed away. They brought them back there to bury them, you see. Well, now that doesn't mean that folks are not going to die because he didn't promise it wasn't going to die. I'll take sickness away from the midst of you the number of your days you'll fulfill. But now in church, I very seldom in church now I'm talking about Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, and for the first number of years, 1937, for instance, to 1943, I'm strictly a preacher. I, I don't teach. I don't like to teach. But then a teaching gift fell on me. I know when it came, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Praise God. I knew exactly why. It's just like somebody come along, you know, and had a, had a cloak and throw it on you. And I stopped dead still. I was right in the middle of the living room in my house. And I said, I know what that is. That's a teaching anointing. Now I can teach. Before, I never did like to teach. Boy, I'm preaching. I'm a preaching. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So I strictly preached. But in church, I very seldom publicly taught, or I didn't do any teaching at all those years, but preached on the subject of faith or even preached on the subject of healing. Very seldom. Very seldom preached on other subjects. But you see, if somebody in my church is sick, and I don't remember ever, ever having two at once, most of the time just one person, I can devote my full time. I, I've taught for two and a half hours to that one person. Same thing I teach on faith today, see, but sharing with them personally. And, and just go back to see them every day sometimes. And, and get them located. You locate people with what to say. They're not in position to receive healing. Sometimes you had to talk them out of dying and talk them into living. Because you're not going to get somebody healed and you believe for healing, them believing they're going to die and talking about them going to die. And sometimes it would take you weeks to do it. The same person. And that's the reason I said, if I could, if I could, on a one-to-one -one basis, deal with people, most of the time, I'd get them healed. Now, once in a while, the Lord will show you, I mean, why they won't get healed. Not, not that it's not his will. It is his will for them to be healed all the time. But you see, you can forfeit your right to God's best. Are you out there? You're going home. Amen. Amen. Praise God. By failure to discern the Lord's body. Now, you remember there in that 11th chapter, talking about the communion? For this cause, for this cause, many, Paul's writing to the church at Corinth, many in the church at Corinth, same thing would be in the church in Tulsa, wherever, many, for this cause, many are weak and sickly. 
and sleep. That is, their bodies are asleep in the grave, spirit going to be with the Lord. Now, for what cause? Not rightly discerning the Lord's body. For this cause. See, there's a cause. Church people, Christians, I'm talking about really born-again, spirit-filled people, people that know the truth. Some folks are sick just because they don't know what the Bible teaches. But there is a cause. Paul says the main cause is not discerning the Lord's body. Now, that has a twofold, op- twofold application. First of all, discern the fact that his body was broken for our physical sustenance. With his stripes, we're healed. See, you can take the Lord's Supper. That's when you take that bro- and break that bread. That's a type of the broken body. You take the, the juice. That's a type of the blood of Jesus that washes away your sins. Well, you can do that all day, but if you don't discern, see, and know the fact, amen, you'll stay sick. Secondly, you need to discern that the Lord's body is the church, and it's one, and walk in love towards fellow members. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Now, you could really get to doing a little meddling here real easily. Amen. I said, amen, amen, Amen. discern the Lord's body and walk in love towards fellow members. In the days of the voice of healing, the leading evangelist in the voice of healing, he had the biggest tent. In fact, he had an oral told me, or Robert oral told me, said he called him because he had his private home phone number, called him. At 4 o'clock in the morning, said, oh, I've got a bigger tent than you do. I just put in an extra, extra uh, section of seat, two more thousand. I mean, he'd seat up to 20,000 people. And the Lord said to me, you go tell him that he's going to die unless he judges himself. And the main thing that he's to judge himself on was love. And walk in love, Jesus said to me, towards a fellow minister, 37, 35 years old. At 38 years old, he's dead because he didn't do it, didn't discern the Lord. You have to be careful. You have to be careful. Walk in love. I, uh, I came here to Tulsa. I'd, I'd never been here to visit. I'd pass through traveling. But I came at the invitation of full gospel businessmen in 1963. Three. And, uh, you know, days of the charismatic move, a lot of denomination people are interested in the Holy Ghost. So I came and spoke to a chapter meeting, banquet in the old Mayo Hotel. And then they wanted me to stay over five nights and teach on the Holy Ghost, just nights to teach on the Holy Ghost and these charismatics seeking the Holy Ghost. Well, we got started and couldn't stop and ran that, what was it, eight weeks. Hallelujah. One of the Assembly of God pastors told me, he said, every Pentecostal church in town got members out of that meeting. Every one of them. Well, thank God for that. Well, now, we moved here to Tulsa then. In 1966, we bought Brother Osborne's old office building over here on North Utica. And we put a little auditorium in there, seat about 300. And about every three months, sometimes well, four times a year, and one time we had five. Brother Ken Copeland, that's where he got acquainted with the ministry. Uh, we'd have a seminar. People would come in. Now, I recognize that these people that are coming are, are church people. See, these are seminars. They're not evangelists. They're not designed to win the lost. Thank God we need to win the lost. But we need teachers too, don't we? We need seminars too, don't we? Amen. I recognize that these people are coming from the churches, you see, and coming sometime as a result of the meeting that I had here three years before. You have to be careful the way you handle other people's sheep. Boy, and I know folks really get quiet. One Baptist pastor down in Texas said, you know, Jesus, one time there's a great storm on. He just stood on board the ship and said, peace be still, and there's a great calm. 
He said, no matter what's happening in church, if you want a great calm, just go to preaching on tithes or people's children. <laughs> and there'll be a great calm. Well, you get in some of these areas. Now, we, we would have, like I said, these seminars. But I constantly told people, this is not a substitute for church. This is only an assist. You need, you need your local church. I never took up any special offerings for any special project, except one time we enlarged a little auditorium and we had to put a steel beam in to support the walls and so on, and it cost quite a bit. And I, I, we didn't have the money. The Lord said to me, go ahead and do it. Just borrow the money and do it. And then during the meeting, tell the people. About it. That's the only thing. I didn't have any special projects. I had some, but I didn't take up any. Because I'm dealing with someone else's sheep, not mine. And I'd encourage them, you support your own. We're going to receive an offering, all right. But you support your own church first. Well, that way you got along with every pastor, you see. Amen. Now, now, you know, we, in, in, this, in this move, this word of faith, if you want to call it that, actually just the Bible, but in Kenneth Hagin Ministry, Rhema Bible Training Center, Rhema Ministerial Association, because, you see, we've got, you know, over 2,000 preachers that some of them line up with others, but that's all right, wherever God leads them, and so many churches. But we're growing enough now that people are coming, you know, in and starting another church in your town or sometimes city. Well, I've been through that. I've been in the ministry 64 years. And I've been through that before, you know. I've had people to say, you know, here, here, here's a city of 50,000 people. I'm thinking of one right now. And, and somebody else come in and started a work of the same group, you see. This is my town. Well, how many you run? 300? Well, there's 49,700 people there that you're not touching. Amen. You ought to be glad. But that man that's coming in, going to start a church there, doesn't need just to come in undercover and slip in, you know, like a sly fox. He ought to come and talk to you. I'm talking about when they're the same family, particularly and say, the Lord's leading me here. How can we work together? How can we be a blessing to one another? Amen. The Bible teaches us that we're laborers together with the Lord. Amen. Another pastor said to me, in fact, I, uh, I, I, I was during World War II, went to his particular town, a little bigger place, not real big, but do a little shopping. I ran into him on the street. See? I saw him coming. He looked sad. He, he got a long face. We greeted one another. And then I said to him, what, what, what's, what's the problem? He hadn't said anything, but you could tell by looking at it. Well, he said, brother so-and-so, fellow Christian, fellow minister, the same group, brother so-and-so has done me wrong. Well, I said, what did he do? Well, he's come here to my town, started another church. I said, he has, yeah. Well, where is he? Well, he's way down the south end of town. Wasn't very close to it. I said, now, I want to ask you a question. I said, uh, the year before he came and started this church, what did you average the year before in Sunday school? He said, 112. I said, this year, he came this year, see. What have you averaged, 113? I said, how many thousands of people are there here? Thousands of them, you not reach it. You ought to pray God start one in the west part of town, one in the east part of town. 
Amen. Praise God. But while we were standing on the street, he said, Brother Kenneth, I want you to pray for him. He said, I've got ulcers of the stomach. Well, sure he did. I prayed for him. I laid hands on him out there on the street. But I didn't tell him, you know, you want to be nice. I might as well just laid hands on him and said, Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. <laughs> it done just as much good. I saw him at a convention then. He, he went ahead and had an operation for ulcers. But I saw him at a convention. He stopped me in the hallway and said, would you pray for me? He said, oh, you know, I had that operation, but the ulcers have come back on me. I noticed this. He never did get healed of his ulcers till he got straightened out with his brother. I saw him again. He's still, I mean, over a period to see of two, three years, he's under that load. I said to him again, I want to ask you a question. How many are you running now since he came, see, a couple of years later, in Sunday school? Oh, we run anywhere from 245 to 270. He's over twice as big as he was. I said, what's, what's he running down there in the south part of town? Well, I'm sorry to say he's a beating us. He's a running up. Well, up to 290 and 300 occasionally. I said, you ought to be rejoicing. Before he came here, you was reaching about 100 people, kids and all, just a little over 110, 100, 112, 113. Now then, both of you together are reaching about 600 people. Glory to God. The kingdom of God is one. You ought to pray that God would send somebody to the other part of town and somebody to the north part of town. Hallelujah. 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 But then when he got straightened out with his brother, he got it healed of his ulcers. I'm saying that. This is a day of healing, but sometimes there's a cause. I said sometimes there's a cause. Amen. Don't try to build on the other fellow's members. Get your own. Don't be a sheep thief. Now, I pastored down in East Texas. There were three churches. Three miles to my west was another church of the same full gospel denomination. Three miles to my east was another church. So within six miles, there were three of us. People came right by those churches to my church. People lived right around my church. I mean, next door to my church. Another family lived right across the street in front of the parsonage. Went to one of the other churches. They didn't come to my. They'd come hear me on Thursday night. Well, one of these fellows said, "Brother, again, I told my wife because gasoline's a ration. She's during the war. All we got to do is just walk across the street and go in the side door. This just this just changed churches. No, no, I said you don't do that." Come on Wednesday, Thursday night if you want to. They had Wednesday night. Or we had a revival. But I said, they need you. I happen to know that he was one of the best financial supporters they had. I said, don't you do it. No, don't you join this church. Another family that lived beside the parsonage. She was over there visiting one day with my wife. And I said, I just told J.D., let's just join Brother Hagin's church. Well, I said, no, you're not going to join my church. Well, why? I said, well, first of all, I don't want you talking about me like you do your pastor. <laughs> no, you just stay where you are. <laughs> Find me another couple that lived on the same street. He said to me, Brother Egan, I've talked to my wife, and we want to join, change churches, join yours. Well, I knew he had some problems. And I didn't tell him, but God had spoken to me and told me just exactly how to help him. But I said, I'll talk to your pastor. And if it's all right with him. So I talked to his pastor. And his pastor said, Brother Hagin, I hate to lose her. She's the best member in my church, the most productive lady, head of the missionary department, Sunday school teacher. But I don't know why some way or another I never have been able to get along with him. I'm going to insist that you take them. I said, unless you do, I'm not going to. 
Well, I noticed this. I noticed at 81, I'm still alive and hopping real good. And these fellas that didn't operate in love are all dead. Are you still out there? Amen. Say amen if you can. If you can't, say oh me. This is the day of salvation. Say it out loud. This is the day of salvation. This is the day of healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, let's go a little bit further. This is not only the day of salvation, deliverance, healing. This is the day of dominion. Yes. Romans 6, chapter the 14th verse said, Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law but under grace. Now, it, wouldn't do, it would not be an injustice to that scripture to read it like this. Satan shall not have dominion over you. Satan shall not have dominion over you. Hallelujah. For you're not under the law, thank God, but under grace. Glory to God. Turn to Colossians, the first chapter, 12 and 13 verses. Giving thanks unto the Father. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet... That's a little blind to us. Another trying to said he's made us able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who hath, that is the Father hath, delivered us, in that word salvation is the word deliver, delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Hallelujah. Now the Amplified Translation reads, the Father has delivered and drawn unto himself out of the control and dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. Whoa, I like that, don't you? Amplify it. Let me read it again. The Father has delivered and has drawn us, you see, to himself out of the control and dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of his love. Now, the Father, or let's put it this way. Look at Colossians 2.15. Turn the page here. We read this the other night, 15th verse, talking about Jesus. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Hallelujah. Now, again, let's read the Amplified on that. God disarmed the principalities and powers arrayed against us and made a bold display and public example of them. Hallelujah. In triumphing over them in him and in it. Another translation reads, he disarmed the principalities and powers which fought against him. Another translation reads, he exposed them, shattered, empty, and defeated in his final glorious triumph. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Now back up to Ephesians. You're familiar with this prayer in Ephesians that Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus. In this very first chapter, he said, in the 16th verse, cease not to give thanks for you. In other words, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that's who he is, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Now, here's a church that's born again and spirit-filled, but evidently they don't have this revelation. If they had it, he wouldn't have to be praying for them to get it, would he? Amen, and give it to them. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, 
that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above. Everybody say far above. All principality and power and might and dominion and every name that's named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body. We're the body of Christ. He's the head. Where's your feet? You got any feet in your head? No, he's put all things under his feet. That means under our feet. Hallelujah, this is the day of dominion. Glory to God, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now, let's go on reading here. You know this, that Paul did not write a letter to the Ephesians in chapter and verses. Man divided in chapters and verses for reference sake. So as you go on reading, he's still talking about the same thing that he talked about in this revelation that he prayed that they would get. And you hath he quickened, that is, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation, manner of life or conduct, in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, but God." But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened, made alive, us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now you ready? Yes. You got your shouting clothes on? Yes. Look at that next verse. That in the ages, 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 not the age, ages, eons upon eons of time, yes. but that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Now, did you get that? I remember a number of years ago, I heard this story. I got in the Pentecostal ranks. Used to call Pentecostals tongue talkers and holy rollers. Holy rollers. Well, this dear lady, filled with the Holy Ghost, faithful to go to church, and her neighbor later is always making smart remarks, you know, and needling her. So she came out. Back in those days, women wore hats. You know, my wife had so many hats. You go to convention, you live the whole back end full of hats. I'm so glad they changed all of that. <laughs> Amen. But she came out all dressed up with her hat on, you know, going to church. And uh, started down the sidewalk, and this other lady was out in the yard, you know, and she come up, you know, to me. Well, I guess you're going to that holy roller tongue talking church. This lady said, no, nah, I'm going to the show. <laughs> now, holiness people didn't go to shows. I'm talking about fixture shows. But see, what she had in mind is he's going to put on a show. <laughs> that he might show in the ages to come. We're going to show. Hallelujah. We, we, we're just rehearsing now. We're just rehearsing now. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Everybody said out loud, I'm going to the show. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Don't know whether it helps you or not, but I've done it again. It preached me happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go into the show. That'd be a good sermon for you pastors. <laughs> Amen. This, this life is just a dress rehearsal. We're getting ready for it. Day. This is the day the Lord's made. Say it out loud. This is the day the Lord's made. It's a day of salvation. It's a day of healing. It's a day of dominion. Under my feet, under my feet. Glory to God. Thou shalt tread upon the serpents, the adder, and the young lions. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now notice that it's also a day of gladness and rejoicing. Notice you go back there to that 118th Psalm. Notice what he said. This is the day that the Lord has made. We'll be glad and rejoice in it. We'll be glad and rejoice in it. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Notice again here, here in, in Joel, the second chapter. You know, here it tells us about, and Peter on the day of Pentecost quoted a part of this second chapter about this is that when the Holy Ghost was poured out. But notice what he said in the 21st verse of the second chapter of Joel. Fear not, O land, be glad, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. 23rd verse, he said, be glad then, you children of Zion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he went on down in the last verse of the chapter after he talked about, you know, it shall come to pass in the last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh and so on. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved or delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said, hallelujah. Praise God. He's talking about the day in which you and I are living. Can you say amen? amen. Now notice again in the 12th chapter of Hebrews. He, writing to the Hebrew Christians, said that we not come unto Mount Zion, you know, and so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. 21st verse. Notice 22nd verse. But ye are come unto Mount Zion. Ye are come unto Mount Zion. Not Mount Sinai, but Mount Zion. Well, what is this Mount Zion? And unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better than that of Abel. Hallelujah. 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 Now then again, you know, as we, we noticed it before, I'm talking about this as a day of gladness and rejoicing. Praise God. That 126th Psalm, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. Well, you see, Zion can apply to us. We just proved that. We were like them the dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord's done great things for them. Notice the next verse. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are sad. Glad. What? Glad. 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 No wonder Paul wrote to the church at Philippi in Philippians 4, 4 and said, Praise, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. To the Thessalonians, he said, rejoice evermore. Evermore. That means all the time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them the dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Full of what? Laughter. Laughter. And our tongue was singing. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Lord's done great things for us, whereof we're glad. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. Now you can laugh in faith. You may not feel like laughing. But then, bless God, the anointing can come on you. And you can't hardly keep from laughing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I was conducting a meeting down in South Texas a number of years ago. Got off to bed. I stayed. Uh, my wife was home with the children. They were in school. And I was traveling home. I stayed in the pastorage with the pastor and his wife. And I'd got off to bed, got off to sleep. And about 1.30, I was awakened. And I had the most alarming heart symptoms because, you see, I had been given up to die because of heart problems years before. And, and I know the symptoms. All of them had come back. And the devil said, you say, how did he say? To your mind, the thoughts. He puts thoughts in your mind. Well, now, this is one time you're not going to get healed. No use of going to the doctor because they've already told you, told you back there and then they can't help you. Nothing going to be done. You're going to die. Well, now, what are you going to do about a case like that? I mean, these thoughts come floating in faster than machine gun bullets can fly. Well, I didn't want to arouse the pastors. Well, now, they were down the hall and in their room. It's winter time, and the door shut. I just pulled the cover up over my head and started laughing. <laughs> Did you feel like laughing? No, I didn't feel like laughing. Did you have a laugh? No, I didn't have any laugh. I put it on. I put it on, just like this. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. 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 Just kept on. How long? I don't know. It's dark. I got my head covered up. But now at a time like that, you know, a few, a little while, it seemed like 10 minutes. I don't know how long it was, but it seemed like it was. And the devil said again, so how do you say it? Thought. Amen. What are you laughing about? I said, I'm laughing at you. <laughs> what are you laughing at me about? I said, you said I'm not going to get healed. That's right. That's right. This is one time you're not going to get healed. I just went back to laughing. Do you feel like laughing? No. Man, with all these heart problems, you don't feel like laughing. Ha, 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 ha. I'm just laughing in the flesh, putting it on. Ha, 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 ha. I kept on till he asked me, what are you laughing? I said, I already told you once. <laughs> already told you once. I'm laughing at you. You know the devil don't like to be laughed at? That's the reason the devil tries to keep you from laughing. Well, now that laughing business, that's going too far. I can't find anything like that in the scriptures. You wonder, bless God, if they ever went to school and learned how to read. <laughs> when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, then was our mouth filled with laughter. Now you can fill it with laughter yourself, or the Holy Ghost can fill it with laughter. But if it's full and filled, it's going to run over. That means you're going to do it. You're going to laugh. Ha, 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 ha. What are you laughing about? I'm laughing at you. What are you laughing at me about? You said I'm not going to get healed. I immediately started laughing again. Ha, 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 ha. And I laughed till he said again. What are you laughing about? I said, I already told you twice. <laughs> laughing at you. What are you laughing at me about? You said not going to get healed. I said, ha, 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 ha. Fourth time. He said, what are you laughing about? I said, I've already told you three times. I'll tell you again, laughing at you. What are you laughing at me about? You said, I'm not going to get healed. That's right. This is one time you're not going to get healed. I throwed the cover off my head, turned the light on my Bible and grabbed it. I opened it up to 1 Peter 2, 24. said, Mr. Devil, I don't know whether you can read it or not, but in case you can't, I'm going to read this to you. <laughs> Who is own self by our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins shall live unto righteousness. By whose stripes ye were? Yeah. By whose stripes ye were? Yeah. Healed. Healed. I said, I'm not trying to get healed. I don't expect to get healed. Jesus already got it for me. 
He already got it. He's already got it. And what he got's mine. You never saw anybody scurry around so fast in your life and gather up all their symptoms and take off. <laughs> and now then, you thought I forgot it, but didn't back to 1950. So I'm ministering under the anointing, but the anointing lifted. Well, I'm going to lie to people. I said, folks, I can't, I can't minister to you under the anointing because the anointing lifted. Now, if you can't come back tomorrow night because I'll make preparation, you know, to be ready for it. Then just come on up and I'll pray for Anybody can do it, though, just in faith, just in faith. Well, they carried this woman. Now, a lady had said to me, one of the churches that was cooperating with the meeting, there's about seven churches altogether. They lived about 35 miles away. And she had told me, the pastor's wife said, Brother Hagin, we're going to bring Sister So-and-so, a member of our church, one night. She hadn't walked a step in four years, been tied to a chair. We had her up, in the, up to Oklahoma City and the best doctors in the state. They said she's 72 years old. She'll never walk another step as long as the day she lives. Well, they carried her. her. Her grandsons literally carried her. They were poor farm folks in 1950. They just carried her, set her down on the altar. Well, I went down there, knelt in front of her, her knees didn't function, her limb laid hands on her knees and so on. And she began to cry, please, oh, Lord, heal me, oh, Lord, oh, God, oh. And I shook her till her teeth rattled <laughs> and said, shut up. Faith doesn't cry, faith shouts. And then I said to her, I don't have any anointing, it's gone. I never felt anything. I never had no hot flash, cold flash, or any kind of flash. <laughs> Amen. Didn't feel a thing. I got my Bible. I sat down beside her. I said, Sister, did you know that you are healed? She looked at me, you know, in amazement, like, you know, what tree did you fall out of? <laughs> you can see she's sitting there, hadn't walked a step in four years. Yeah, you're healed. Now, if folks only know it, back to that thought now. If folks only know it, they're healed. In the mind of God, in the mind of Jesus, they're healed. She said, oh, Emma, I said, you sure are. I'll prove it to you by the word. I laid the Bible on her lap and had, you to, had her to read 1 Peter 2.24. Anybody could do it. 1 Peter 2.24, three times. That's out loud, out loud. See, when you read out loud, it registers on you better. Out loud. And then I said to her after, after three times of reading it out loud, Read that last statement, that last clause of that verse. By who she read it, had her to read that three or four times out loud. By whose stripes ye were healed. 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 By whose stripes ye going to be healed. Well, I believe I'm going to get it. You ain't. I said, you ain't. That ain't the way you get it. Amen. By whose stripes ye were. I said, may I ask you a question? She said, surely. I said, is were past tense, present tense, or future tense? Well, she said, it's past tense. And a look of surprise came on her face. She said, well, if we were healed, I was. I said, that's exactly what I want you to believe. If you can just get people to believe what the Bible. See, I believe God answers prayer. Well, sometimes folks actually get an answer, but most of the time they don't. I believe God's going to heal me. That's not Bible believing. Well, I've, I've, had, I've had people come to me and say, Brother Egan, Brother Roberts laid hands on me. Brother Branham laid hands on me. Brother Cole, these are folks in the days of the healing revival, laid hands on me and, and half a dozen more. I thought I'd try you. I said, you might as well go sit down. You ain't going to get nothing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. By whose stripes, say it out loud, by whose stripes, by whose stripes ye, were ye were healed. healed. By whose stripes, by whose stripes I, was I was healed. healed. If, I was, if I was, I am. I am. Think on that till it gets down in here. Glory to God. I said, sister, see, you can see she's got a hold of it. By whose stripes ye were. Will you do what I tell you to do? 
Well, I will if it's easy. I said, it's the easiest thing you ever did in your life. I said, lift both hands and begin to praise God because you are healed. Not going to be. Not going to be. You are. Now, still sitting there, having never walked a step. I wish you could have seen her. Her face lit up like a neon sign in the night tide. She began to smile. She looked up and said, oh, oh, dear Lord. Before, see, she was crying to beg. Oh, I'm so glad I'm healed. Oh, I'm so glad I can walk again. Hadn't walked a step. Oh, Lord, you know how tired I got sitting around those four years having to be waited on. Oh, I'm so glad I don't have to be waited on anymore. Oh, I'm so glad. This is the day the Lord has made. We'd be glad. <laughs> We'd be glad. We'd be glad and rejoice in it. I said to the congregation, let's all, let's all stand and lift our hand and praise God with our sister because she is, is healed. We all stood and praised God and after a while they stopped. I turned to her, still sitting there, no evidence. I said, now my sister arise and walk in Jesus' name. God's my witness and four or five hundred other people that she jumped up and leaped and walked all over, all over the front of that church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Doctor said, doctor said she'll never walk again as long as the day she lived. Simply easiest thing in the world to get her healed. Work for anybody. Well, now I've tried it and it didn't work for me. It don't work trying, it works doing it. Amen. And then somebody went off and told a lie on me. They said, you know that fellow Hagen healed a cripple woman over there last night. Never did any such thing. Jesus healed her nearly 2,000 years ago. She found out about it last night. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. You don't need hands laid on you. Thank God for laying on the hands. Maybe some folks down there at a lower degree of faith. There's more than one way to receive healing. <laughs> Think on the Scripture until it becomes a part of your inner being. Registers here on the inside of you. And then you know the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, I, I trust you know that's in the Scripture and that you read it there. Say it again. By whose stripes? Ye were, ye were healed. Now point to your neighbor. Say, by whose stripes? By whose ye ye were, were healed. healed. By whose stripes? By whose ye, were ye were healed. Say that if we were healed, we were healed I, was healed. I was healed. See, it's past tense, isn't it? If I was healed, then I am healed. Now, this is the day the Lord's made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. That's the reason I had her, to begin to praise God, to rejoice and be glad in this day the Lord made. Hallelujah. This day the Lord made. I'll rejoice. I'll rejoice. I'll be glad in it. Hallelujah. 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 Now say it out loud and let your heart agree with it. Thank God for the Word. Thank God for laying on of hands. Thank God for anointing with oil. But I have come to know this is the day that the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day of deliverance. This is the day of safety. This is the day, hallelujah, of healing. This is the day of soundness. By whose stripes ye were healed. 
That belongs to us in this day. For this is the day. Jesus Christ himself is the chief cornerstone upon which this is built. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We were healed. We were healed. If, we were healed if we were healed, I was healed. I was healed. If, I was healed if I was healed, I am healed. I am healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. Turn and tell your neighbor, I'm healed. I'm healed. Yeah, but somebody said, Hallelujah. 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 Now come over here, Craig and Lady. Folks couldn't be here. They're going to take these handkerchiefs to somebody. Thank God for the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of our camp meetings here, we had a whole pile of handkerchiefs like that. My wife and I laid hands on them. We went uh, from here to uh, after camp meeting about a week or so after those one week meetings we had, you know, of healing and faith. Well, we went to, uh, I believe, Omaha, Nebraska, then on up to Minneapolis. And so in this meeting, there were some folks that wanted to wanted to take us to lunch one day, and several of them, they were Lutherans, pastor. But they'd got into the charismatic goo, got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And he said to me, the pastor said, I had a number of my parishioners who were sick. I took several handkerchiefs up there. My wife really took them up there. We had them pinned together with our name on it so, you know, somebody won't get them. And he'll, so he said, after the service is over, you'd laid hands on My wife went up there, and she started to pick those handkerchiefs up, and she said, man, it's just like electricity's coming out of them. Just, it, it hit my hand, and she drew back. She's afraid to try to pick it up. And he said, I was right about it. I said, that's just that anointing he's talking about, and reached and picked it up. He said, I gave those seven or eight of them. And he said, every single one of them was healed. Every one of them was healed. Thank God that's one way healing can be manifested. But see, you are here tonight. Here's another way healing can be manifested. Glory to God, you're here tonight. Say it again. This is the day, is the, day. The, Lord's made. the Lord's made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I'll be glad in it. This is the day of healing. It is written, it is written. by whose stripes, stripes. ye he were, he were healed. If we were healed, I was healed. If I was healed, I am healed. Praise God. Now, Father, hands are laid upon these claws and the same anointing. Glory to God. The anointing of the Holy Spirit flows into these claws and saturates them as they're laid on the body of the sick. That power will be transmitted unto the body. The disease or diseases will go out of them. The evil spirit or spirits will depart from them. In the name of Jesus, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now turn and testify to your neighbor. Praise God, I am healed. I am. I am. I am. I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord's made. I rejoice. 
and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God turned to get the captivity of Zion, then we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth, mouth filled with laughter. Hallelujah. Our tongue was singing. <laughs> Ha 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 Hallelujah. 